Dr. Ulmer is the founder and CEO of the Ulmer Institute, a first-of-its-kind organization focused on addressing urban psychological trauma through professional treatment, research, and training. With over 40 years in ministry, Dr. Ulmer is the pastor and teacher of Faithful Central Bible Church, an 80-year-old megachurch based in Inglewood, California, with a weekly attendance of over 3,500. Dr. Ulmer also serves as presiding bishop of the Macedonia International Bible Fellowship based in Johannesburg, South Africa, an association of pastors representing ministries in Africa and the United States. Dr. Ulmer is the former president of the King's University in Los Angeles, where he also serves as a founding board member, adjunct professor, and director of the King's at Oxford an annual summer session held at Oxford University. Dr. Ulmer is the renowned author of several books, including Spiritually Fit to Run the Race, In His Image, An Intimate Reflection of God, The Champion in You, Knowing God's Voice and Passionate God. He's a loving husband to his wife of 40 years and father to his two daughters, one son, and five granddaughters. A celebrated author, passionate educator, community builder, and visionary leader, Dr. Kenneth C. Ulmer. Let's do it this way this time, okay? Only the people that have been blessed give the Lord a hand of praise, won't you? Ah, uh, come on, you can do better than that. That sounds like a little patty cake, little patty cake, little patty cake. God, been better than that. Come on, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Somebody ought to bless God just to make the devil mad, just, just to spite the devil. Glory to the name of Jesus. Father, how we bless your name in this house today. Lord, we love you. We exalt you, we praise you, we bless you. Oh God, for all that you've done, we bless your name. When we look at our lives and see what you're doing, we bless your name. And then God, based on what you've done and for what you're already doing, we have enough faith to praise you for what you're going to do even before you do it. You have some worshipers in this house. You have some praisers in this house. You have some grateful hearts in this house, oh God. Now, Lord, I ask that you will prepare us for the word that you prepared for us. Break up the fallow ground of our hard places and tough places and hurt places that we might be receptive soil for the seed of your word. It is to that end that I'm available for you now and to use me according to your will. Stand in my body, think with my mind, and speak with my tongue, and say to us those things you'd have us know, and do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on one more time. Bless the Lord, won't you? Amen. You, you may see that. Wow, it is an honor to be here. I'm, I'm going to uh, do my best to stay on time. Uh, I'm going to follow this clock right here. Anytime y'all want to stop, it'll be okay. Just stop this clock right here. Um, I, I cannot express to you how grateful I am to be here. Some of, some of you guys have... Uh, how many of you remember or you were here uh, in the church building before you were in this new one? Anybody? Okay, yeah, yeah. Some OGs in the house. I see what Okay, yeah, so I, I go back that far, okay? Uh, Dr. K. Bailey helped shape the ministry that I have today. He, <laughs> Dr. Bailey, a guy named Dr. Lloyd Blue, A. Lewis Patterson, they taught me how to spell ex exposition. Uh, and you are a part of a great legacy. This house, this church, is a part of a great legacy. God must really love you. If you, you should never go to bed at night and feel unloved. God must, he loved you enough to plant you in this house. You, you, you ought to give God praise for that. 
He loves you that much. I'm going to say some things about the pastor as I get into the message more, but um, I, I'm, I'm going to make some, a shift today, and I'm, I've been struggling in my spirit in between the services. Um, I, God brought some of you here, that brought you here today. You weren't at the first service. And there are some things that I want to share because you are here. And, and I want to be obedient to the Lord. Um, and so it's going to kind of look like I'm kind of all over the board. As I'm telling you right now, I'm all over the board, like I'm back and forth. And so when I get into this thing, it, it looks like I'm all over the board. When you hunched that and said, girl, look like he's all, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be all over the board. All right? so just telling you right now, okay? Um, I'm honored to have uh, my son who travels with me around the world, my wife, um, 46 years she is. Wow. Stand up, let me look at you one more time, baby. That's. Right? Um, that's uh, that's what 72 looks like. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm uh, I'm 75, and when you get 75. Uh, two things go, you know, you get 75, you, your memory goes, when you get 75, you, the first thing goes is your memory. Uh, and, uh, and I forgot the second one, but anyway, I'm just saying, when you get in this area, uh, you kind of take it one minute at a time. I need, you, I need you to use your, your sanctified imagination today, okay? Um, it, it's going to seem seriously like I'm kind of disconnected in this, but I believe um, there's someone here you were assigned to this service. You, you thought about coming at, at the first service, and for whatever reason, you didn't come. And God knew when when Adam and Eve were running around in the garden looking for a leaf to hide under, you'd be here today. I need you to use your sanctified imagination and come with me to the book of Hebrews. Book of Hebrews, okay? Did they spin, speed this clock up some? Did it? <laughs> what kind of time y'all on down there? Um, now listen, here, here, here's your imagination. I need you to imagine that this, this section in chapter 13 of Hebrews, okay, come with me. I'm going to pick it up about verse 17. I need you to imagine that this is a letter, listen, from Pastor Carter. All right? I need you to imagine a letter from Pastor Carter. Now, that, that is, that is uh, exegetically allowable because we don't know who wrote the letter anyway. And so, um, in your imagination, try to read this and come with me through this text as though it is a letter from your pastor. Okay? Some people thought Paul wrote it, some said Priscilla, some said it was Barnabas, Silas, because no one really knows who wrote it, so might as well act like it was Pastor Carter, see? Here's what I want you to see. See, see these, these, this section as a pastoral prayer. You got that? A pastoral prayer. It is a prayer from the pastor. It is a prayer for pastors. Okay? Pick me up at verse 17. He says, he says Obey your leaders... And submit to them. Stop right there. We know that whoever is the writer, who could be Pastor Carter, is away. Okay? He's not there with them. We know that in verse 19. Verse 19 says, pray that I will return. One version says, pray that I'll be restored. One version says, pray that I will come to you again. So the logical uh, assumption from the text is, he's not there. 
He's the leader, but he's not there. Listen very carefully. That's important. But in verse 17, he says, verse 17, he says, I've left some people in charge. And in verse 17, he says, obey them. Obey your leaders. Again, they are obviously leaders that he has placed in charge because in verse 19, he's not there. He's looking to the time to come home. And so the first thing he says, and this letter from Pastor Carter, Pastor Carter says, pray for those that I've left in charge. I, I, want, I want Pastor Aaron, I want the pastors to stand. I want uh, ministry leaders, if you're a ministry leader, deacons, elders, whatever, I want you guys to stand. I want you guys to stand. I want you ladies and gentlemen to stand. See, see all, all over this room, all over, all over this building, there are men and women who are in that verse and the writer, Pastor Carter says, obey them. This obey is not some condescending term. Listen. The writer is saying, the word, the word obey means to have confidence in. So he's saying, I'm not there, but I've got confidence. You're in good hands. He says, Trust them as they lead you. These women, these men, some behind the scenes, many of them, their names will never be called. But they have been sovereignly positioned by God as leaders in this house. And the writer and Pastor Carter says, obey them, honor them. Help me praise God for these men and women who are standing. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, y'all still doing patty cakes. Come on, help me bless God for them, okay? Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Sit down, sit down. Why, he says, because they watch over your soul. Trust them, have confidence in them. Why, he says, verse 17 says, because they watch over your soul. Here, the key word is the word watch. Interesting, interesting word. He says, in leadership, you're like a watchman. The word watch is a very strange term because it means, listen, it means to deny self of sleep. It's the idea of losing sleep. He says, as leaders, as leaders, you're, you're so connected to the people that you lead. Uh, you lose sleep over them. Let's bring it close to home. If you are a leader, you are in a position of authority over someone. It could be your children, your home, your family, a job, whatever it is. If you are really connected with them in a soulish way, have you ever lost sleep over someone you care for? Maybe, maybe you're a parent. Maybe you're a parent. Maybe you're a parent. Uh, Ever lost sleep over your children? Maybe you're in a ministry area and there's someone in that area who's struggling with something and going through something. And, and you find yourself two, three o'clock in the morning losing sleep. God brought someone here today and, and, and you're, at a, you're at a crossroads in your life and you're agonizing over someone that you love. And you're watching because of their soul. You're losing sleep. You, you know something's not right. And what's so weird is they're sleeping well. You, you stand up all night and they snoring all night, see? But it's about a spiritual connection that God gives us with people who we're connected to in the spirit. And God says, these men, these women, these women, they, they, they carry you so close to their spirit, their heart, they lose sleep over you. Now watch this. Go back to the text. Then he says, they watch over your soul that they may give an account and that they may do it without groaning. It, 
They've got to stand before God one day. And give an account for your soul. Anybody who's got anything to do with my soul, I want them to be doing real good. I want them blessed. I want them whole. I want them healthy. Because the Bible says they must give an account for your soul. Now watch this. He says, obey them. Next verse, he flips it. Then he says, the next verse, he says, pray for us. Verse 19 tells us he's not there. Before that verse, he says, there are others with me. Pray for us. In this case, it could be uh, Pastor Carter and his family or whatever. But pray for us. And then the next verse he says, that I may return to you. That's verse 19. Which means, pray for me. Paul had a habit uh, when he was exhorting and ministering to others. Uh, and and he, he, he would always say, pray for me. In the book of Ephesians, book of Ephesians, chapter, chapter 6, he lists the spiritual warfare. Anybody know anything about spiritual warfare? He says in the list of spiritual weapons, he says, you have two offensive weapons. God, I love your word. Two offense, offensive weapons. One, he says, is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The other one, he says, is prayer. And then he says, and pray for me. Um, who, who's praying for you? Who, who's agonizing for you? Who's, who's, who's standing in the gap praying for you? Who, who sees what you're going through and they're joining you in prayer? The struggle you're in, the pain you're in, the problem you're in, the situation that you're in. Who, who is so connected with you that they're praying for you. Who have you asked to pray for you? Who have you humbled yourself enough? Man, I need you to pray for me on this thing. I'm, I'm facing something right off down through here. I, I, I need you to pray for me. Paul says, pray for me. Watch this. He says, and pray, I love this verse. He says, that I may Give a clear conscience. Verse 18, Lord, help me. Watch this. Word conscience means this. He says, pray, pray, pray for us that we may stand before God and before the world, listen now, with a clear conscience. Let's go to the deep end of the pool. He says, pray for us that when we stand before God, our conscience Matches our conduct. Okay. Let me try this out over here. He's, he says, let, let my conscience confirm my conduct. Y'all yeah, got it, y'all got it, y'all got it. So, so that my inner witness confirms my outer actions. So I said another way. He's talking about integrity. Pray for me that there's no inconsistency between my conduct and my conscience. It's the idea of being in harmony. He's saying, he's saying pray that my conscience is harmonized with my conduct. Let me try it another way. I'm doing something. See, uh, I'm involved in something. And I know it's not right. They're getting too quiet over here. I'm going to go over here and say. He says, he says, pray for me that my conduct before the world is the same as my conscience behind the scenes. Your, you know this one. Your reputation is who you are before people. 
Your integrity is who you are when ain't nobody watching. He says, he says, and I'm struggling in this thing, and I need you to pray for me. I'm, I'm off into something, and I know it's not right. I'm, there's an inconsistency between what I know in my heart and how I'm acting before the world. And I need somebody to pray with me off down through here. I'm wrestling with this thing. Pray for me that my conscience is consistent with my conduct. That's why you didn't come at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Hear me today. That's why you didn't come at 9. Because God loves you too much to leave you in that inconsistency between who you are on the inside and what you're doing on the outside. So he says, pray for me. Who do you trust with your mess? Who, who, who can you trust enough to tell your mess? To share your struggle? To confront the inconsistency? between who you are in public and what you're doing in private. Lord, help me. And so the writer says, pray for me. Hmm, hmm. He says, pray for me that my conscience would be clear. Hmm. Um, old song, old song. Y'all wouldn't know this because y'all too young. Old song. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. I love this. Look, there's a little, little arrogant verse. It ain't my mama, ain't my mama, ain't my daddy, and my, it's me. I'm standing and I need somebody who loves you enough to pray you through your mess. Who loves you enough to stand with you when God's trying to pull you through? He says, pray for me that my integrity would stand. I, 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 a couple of months ago, I, I, after, after 41 years pastoring a church, I stepped aside. Let me tell you my greatest fear in 41 years, Aaron. Greatest fear. I, I feared it every day of my life. My fear was, Lord, don't let me do something that would make them ashamed to call me pastor. 41 years. Don't, don't, don't let who I am when I leave the pulpit contradict who I am for your kingdom. Lord, cover me. I'm almost done. Got to hurry up. Go to the next verse. Then he says this. Then he says in verse 20, now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep, verse 21, equip you. Stop right there. I'm almost done. I got to watch this clock right here. <laughs> he now switches and he's praying for them. Your pastor, wherever he is, your pastor's praying for you. He, you're on his heart. You're in his spirit. And so here at the end of this section, instead of asking them to pray for him, he says, now let me pray for you. And so he says, I lift you up to the God of peace. I lift you up to the God of the resurrection. I'm almost done. And the, the, the prayer is, is pivoting on the word equip. See that? One version says, make you perfect. One version says, complete you. One version says, may, may God equip you. Now, here we go. I'm almost done. The word, the word equip is a very graphic word. Actually, it's used often in a medical sense. Equip means to put what is out of position back in position. Y'all got it. Y'all learn fast on this side. The, the, the word equip means 
something is dislocated. And because it's dislocated, you can't be all that I've called you to be, and you can't do all I've called you to do. So I lift you up to the God who is able to relocate what's dislocated. Hey, y'all ain't got it. I was, I was a little boy playing football, and, 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 and I got tackled, and, and, and he hit me on the side, and this hand like here, this arm was over here. See, and it was just dangling. Like, you know, it was, it, was, it was, little bone was sticking up and everything. My mama started, she started hollering and crying and everything because it was dislocated. And, and she took me to the doctor, Dr. Jackson. Dr. Jackson says this, he said, he said, he said son, look at, look at me, look at me. Look, look, at, look, look, at, look at me. And he took, he took, my, took my arm and, and he said, look, look at me. And he took my arm. My arm was like this. And he said, he said, mm. I said, what else? He said, no, no, no. Look at me. He said, mm. And that joint snapped back in place. Two things. Look at me. Mm. You don't need another job. You don't need a new car. What you need, first of all, is put your eyes on him and watch God. Mm. I speak a mm in this house. I release a mm anointing for your marriage, for your finances, for your career. Mm, 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 mm. It, it just means some stuff ain't in position for you to be all that God's called you to do. And if you keep your eyes on him, Mm. I speak a mm for all y'all up there. Mm, mm, mm. God's about to put some stuff back in position, and when he does that, you're going to become all that he's called you to be. You're going to do all he called you to do, but he can't do it right now because you got to get in position. And if you keep your eyes on him, mm, Lord, release a holy mm in this house. Y'all ain't got it. Y'all ain't, ain't got it. When, 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 I said, I'm going to minute, I'm going to minute. Uh, when, when you're playing football, football, these guys lined up playing football. And there's a guy in the back, and, and he runs to the, the quarterback. He comes real close. The quarterback hands off to him, see. He has to get close enough, see, to hand off. See? And he hands off this way, and he runs like this. There's another guy way over here on the corner, see. And he's down. Quarterback's way over there. He's down. Ball is snapped. This guy runs way down this aisle over here. See? And the quarterback has got his eye on him. He takes the ball and he throws the ball over here. Y'all ain't got it. The man is running over here. The quarterback takes the ball. He doesn't throw the ball over here. He throws the ball over there because the runner has a pattern he must run. And the pattern takes him from there over to this side. And the quarterback knows if I throw this at a certain speed, I ain't even looking at him. But if I put it over there, he's going to come from there and get in position. And by the time he gets there, the ball is already waiting on him. God's about to send some of y'all out for a long pass. That was been trying to trip you up and block you and stop you. But if you can just get in position, let God do it. Mm, you're going to see God do things amazing in your life. Open doors that nobody can close. Make a way where there is no way. He's going to take you from powerlessness to praise in your name. You got to have enough faith to praise God for where you're going before you get there. I need about 19 folk who got that much praise. I didn't about nine, with that much, y'all ain't got that much praise to thank God not for where you is, but for where you ain't yet. It's bad English, but it's good theology. God wants to bless you where you ain't at yet. He wants to bless you for where you're going. And when you get there, the blessing is already waiting, the power is already waiting, the victory is already waiting, 
Deliverance already ready. Just get in position and watch God through signs and wonders in your life. Come on, help me bless God, somebody. Oh, God, I love it. I love it. I love it. Sit down, sit down, sit down, Reagan. This clock is still ticking. Y'all got to sit down, sit down. He says, I lift you up to resurrection power. He says in verse 20, the God, God, I love your word, who brought again Christ from the dead. Y'all ain't got it. He says, I'm putting you in the hands of the God who brought Jesus back. Now watch this. The first word means he was down, so he brought him up. Y'all get that? So if you ain't down, I ain't talking to you. But if you ever been down, this is your verse. Because it means that God's about to do something that's going to bring you up. The next thing is, he was in a grave, which meant nobody expected him to come out. Y'all ain't got that. There are some folk in your life, some haters in your life, who have already written you off, who said you will never make it, you will never recover, you will never bounce back. This word is for you. And then he says, there's a power, God, I love it, that God's about to release in you that's going to bring you up. It's called resurrection power. Listen, in Ephesians chapter 6, he says, I pray that you would know this power. Paul, what kind of power is he? He says this, it's power according to the mighty power of God. Y'all ain't got it. It's power according to the working of mighty power. You still ain't got it. It's power according to power of powerful power. I'm going too fast. God wants to release in your life power according to the power of his powerful power. He stacks power on top of one another to emphasize what God's ready to do in your life. And then the man says, well, what kind of power is that? That's power according to powerful power. He says, I'm glad you asked. It's the same power that went into a borrowed tomb. It's the same power that saw Jesus on a slab inside of a rock. It's the same power that moved the rock outside of the rock with the rock inside on the rock, on the rock, moved it out, the rock stepped out of the rock, stood on high with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That's the same power God wants to release in this place. I speak it in Jesus' name. Resurrection power. Then, the, well, here comes the shout. He said when he came out, he put all things under his feet. Y'all ain't got it. Which means the same devil that tried to put him in the grave is now under his feet. I got an announcement. The devil's position in your life is not on your mind. It's not in your marriage. It's not in your money. It's not on your job. The position of the devil in your life is under your feet. Y'all ain't got it. Y'all got to learn how to step on the devil's head. You got to learn how to give God praise by the power of resurrection, which means you are coming out of wherever you're in. Tell somebody I'm coming out. Uh, I'm watching this clock. I got to go. I'm, I used to watch cowboy movies when I was a little boy. Y'all know, y'all don't have cowboy movies no more. And in cowboy movies, the plot was always the same, always the same. You got the good guy, you got the bad guy. Same plot. The good guys were running. The bad guys were running after them. Same plot. And some kind of way, the good guys would follow the bad guys, and they'd end up in a little hut, little cabin, same cabin in every movie. <laughs> and they'd always be hiding in the cabin. And then the good guys on the outside would make a pronouncement to those on the inside. Two things. Number one, you're surrounded. We've got you surrounded. Announcement number two. Come out with your hands in the air. Resurrection power means you're in a place that you can't get out by yourself. But God says he's about to release power in your life so that when he moves in your life, you're going to come out. And when you come out, you've got to put your hands in the air and give God some praise. You're surrounded. I came to tell somebody today, you may have to cry sometime, but God's got you surrounded. You may feel like you're out there all by yourself, but God has you surrounded. You may feel lonely and 
rejected, but God's got you surrounded. And he says, when you come out and you are coming out, come out with your hands in the air. You can't be too cute. Can't be too sophisticated. When you come out, you come out with joy on your lips, praise in your mouth, and glory. Lift up those hands and give God some praise. I need about 19 praises up in here who will be like Diana Ross. Diana said, I'm coming out. You got to tell the devil I'm coming out. Tell the enemy I'm coming out. Tell all the haters I'm coming out. Tell all the problems I'm coming out. And you got to come out, put those hands in the air, and give God some. I release a spirit of praise in this house. Somebody help me praise God today. Lift up those hands and give God some glory. Tell the neighbor I'm coming out. Ah, uh, y'all don't mean it. You don't mean it. You don't mean it. I'm coming out. I may have tears in my eyes, but I'm coming out. I may get weary sometimes, but I'm coming out. Come on and help me bless God, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody standing, everybody standing, everybody standing, everybody standing, everybody standing. God told me to tell somebody today, you coming out of that mess. I came all the way from Los Angeles on a red eye all night. My assignment to deliver a message. You coming out of this. I said, you're coming out of this. God brought you here at this service to speak a word into your spirit. Your conduct has not matched your character. Your conscience cannot confirm your conduct. But God says, you're coming out. There's a, there's a financial issue. Help me, Lord. Something to do with finances. And you have felt, you have felt, help me, Lord, you felt surrounded with no way out, something to do with finances. I don't know if it's a job, a career, a business. You've, you felt hemmed in. God brought you here today. Because you're coming out. God brought someone here today. You, 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 you may not want to raise your hand on this one. You may not want to come to the altar on this one. But your spirit is in a storm. God brought you here today. Because your spirit is tossed to and fro. God's word to you is you're coming out. I want to be obedient and then I'm done. There's an issue here with someone's children. Someone's children. issue with someone's children you, you've been losing sleep over a son or a daughter you've been agonizing over a child you've been tossed not knowing which way to go over a child God brought you here today You're coming out. I want to be obedient. You've made some bad decisions. You made some bad decisions. You made some decisions that altered the course of your life. And 
and you couldn't come at seven at nine God brought you here it's like your world is closing in on you I I see you I see you like I see you like in a room where it's, where it's like the walls are closing in this means nothing to most of you but it feels like your world is just closing in on you God says you're coming out God's word to you he's bringing you out if that's you I, I want to pray for you I'm, I'm, I'm way over time I, I'm on assignment I, I, I want to be obedient I'm so sorry but, but I want to pray I want to pray if that yes I see you coming I see you I see you coming I see you coming yes I see you coming. Yes, 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 yes. I see you coming. I see you coming. Yes, 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 yes. I see you coming. 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 Yes, yes. I see you coming. I see you coming. I see you coming. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I see you coming. I see you coming. I see you coming. I see you coming. Your coming to this altar is spiritually symbolic. Let me help you. Coming to this altar is spiritually symbolic. What do I mean? I mean the steps that you have taken from where you were here is symbolic of you stepping out of where you were to where God wants you to be. I see you coming. 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 Yes, I see you coming. I see you coming. I see you coming. I see you coming. It may look like you're surrounded, but you're surrounded by God. Yes, I see you coming. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're coming out. You're, you're coming out. You're coming out. You're coming out. of Jesus release resurrection power in this house you're the God who brought Jesus up and out we your daughters and your sons stand at this altar by faith trusting you to bring us up and bring us out oh God we ask in Jesus name that you would make our lives a testimony of your resurrection power. And when the devil thinks he's done with us, when the devil thinks he's gotten victory, we come out with our hands in the air and we declare, I'm back. We bless you for it. We thank you for it, God. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every family, every household, every business, every career 
Oh God, we speak your blessing over it. Your favor over it, oh God, in Jesus' name. We will give your name all the honor, the praise, and the glory. We'll do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Put those hands together and help me bless you. On your way back, tell two people, I'm coming out. Got to make a testimony. Make a testimony. T tell at least two people. Got to make a testimony. I'm coming out. Coming out.